Mark chapter 2. And it's a privilege, it's a privilege to be up here tonight ministering behind this pulpit. Whether it's in a chapel or the church house, it's a privilege to be behind here. And um, I want to stay right in that same spirit of Passion Week and right in line with that in this soul winning week of evangelism here in San Diego, amen. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Give me a big amen when you have it. Amen. Amen. It says this, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. I want to jump to verse 11. It says, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you've done already, for the atmosphere that's already here. And I pray that you would minister this word to your people, just like the way you ministered to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can you give three people my title and tell them, Passion Through the Roof. Tell them, I got passion through the roof, amen? And you may be seated. I got passion through the roof. Here in the book of Mark, we find Jesus coming home. He's just returned home, and rather than coming home to take a nap and rest, he's coming home to continue doing the ministry, and he is greeted by a large group of people. The Bible says that there was so many people there that there was no room left inside the house, not even outside the door. They were overflowing with the people, amen? That sounds like a victory outreach event. How many know we'll fill up the house of God? Capacity don't mean anything to us, amen? Standing room only, people standing on the, sitting on the altar, out the door. They were making it work because the people knew that Jesus was in town. Jesus was home. So here is Jesus in this place that is filled with people, and he's preaching to them. They were there to get a word from Jesus. I believe some were there looking for a miracle from Jesus, just the touch of Jesus. And here is Jesus ministering to them when all of a sudden some men came approaching him. And what I love about these men is that they didn't come just carrying their burdens. They didn't come just with their needs. They didn't come to Jesus just with what they needed from him, but these men came to Jesus carrying a man. They came carrying a paralyzed man to Jesus, amen? This shows me that these were men of passion. Look at your neighbor and say, do you got passion? These were men of passion. Why does this show me that they had passion? Because number one, passion meets the need. Passion meets the need. You see, they didn't just see the paralyzed man's need, but they went and seen the need and just say, you know, they didn't just see it and say, man, I have pity on them. I feel bad for him. Poor guy. He's paralyzed, man. I'm going to pray for him. Let me drop a prayer request for him. Let me give him some change out of my pocket. Let me buy him something to eat. But no, no. They say, you know what? I see a need in him, and I think I got what it takes to meet the need. How many know that takes passion? You see, the men seen this man's need, and rather than going on about their day, they said, you know what? I can't offer him nothing. I got nothing much to give him, but I heard Jesus is home. I heard Jesus is back in town. And though I can't give him nothing, what if we take him to Jesus? You see, these men didn't just see a need, but they met the need. And what I love about the UTC is it trained me in this. It said, you don't just see the need. But you feel the need, and then you what? Meet the need. But how many know that takes passion? But that's what I love about our ministry, is we're not just an oriented ministry that comes together for a good time. 
The women just had a convention, but you see, it wasn't a one-time moment. What they did is they went and they sensed the need, they seen the need, they felt the need, but how many know they came home? But not just home to see the need and feel the need, but they came home to meet the need. That's what we believe in this ministry. It's not just being people that see the need, but know how to meet the need. Can you say amen? They seen that they couldn't do anything for him, but they knew there was some place they could take him. They said, let's take him to Jesus. And how many know that's what we've been doing here in our ministry for the past 50 plus years? I thank God for our founders and I thank God for our leaders that haven't just seen the need in the inner cities of the world, but they said, you know what, let's meet the need. And they've been planting churches in those inner cities with a God given vision. Why? Because they have a passion. How many know we're part of a ministry that doesn't just have a vision, but it has a passion to see that vision come to pass? That's what we're a part of. But it's a passion. It's a passion for the mission of seeing drug addicts set free, gang members set free, broken families restored, and the world taken for Jesus. I don't know about you, but I thank God for what he brought me through. I thank God for setting my family free, for setting me in the ministry. But I thank God for a passion in this ministry that says you don't just see the need around you, but you need it. Why? You meet the need because we got a passion in our DNA. Amen? But it's a passion. It's a passion that doesn't just see the need, but meets the need. And that's why we're here as the West Coast Urban Training Center. Why? Because Pastor Al and Sister Georgina, they see the need in the city. And they're being intentional, saying, you know what? In this harvest season, let's come together and reach our city. And it's been powerful. Second day of evangelism. We have families in the house of God already that the UTC has been out there seeing. Last night, we were seeing salvations taking place. We're seeing drug addicts being delivered. Why? Because we got passion in our DNA. Amen? That's what's happening here in the city of San Diego. Meeting them not just with the flyer, not just with the testimony, but meeting them with the life-changing power of Jesus. Amen? Is there still a need in the city? Yes. But the devil better watch out because I believe in this Passion Week, we're serving the devil notice in the city of San Diego, saying that we came here with a purpose, we came here with a passion, not just to see the need, not just to feel the need in an altar call, but we're going to meet the need in our job. We're going to meet the need in the city. We're going to meet the need in the neighborhood. There's still more souls that got to come to San Diego. There's still more souls to be reached, and we got a passion to reach them. It gets me fired up. Why? Because it's a passion. It's a passion. That me that never came from drug addiction, never came from a, a background of gangs, never came from that, born and raised in the ministry, but knowing that this ministry reached my family and set them free, and because of that, today we're able to meet the need for others. We're seeing this happening all over the world. We're seeing this happening here in this crusade. We're seeing this as we're a witness and evangelizing in the city. We're meeting the need. We're meeting the need. We're not just seeing it. We're not just preaching about it. We're not just making videos about it. How many know we don't just pick up offerings about it? But what do we, we hit the ground. Why? Because we meet the need. That's what we're called to do. Meet the need in the inner city. And we're seeing this happen. So these men are here and they've seen this man. And they said, you know what? Let's meet the need of the man. Let's pick him up and take him to Jesus. So there they go, taking the man to Jesus. So number one, passion meets the need. Number two, passion makes a way. Passion meets the need, and then passion makes a way. You see, the Bible says that there was no room left, not even outside of the house. How many know they could have got discouraged? But you see, there was no easy way to get the man to Jesus. How many know that sounds familiar, right? Doesn't seem like nothing comes easy in Victory Outreach. Doesn't seem like you want to start a ministry and it doesn't come easy. Doesn't seem you want to take your place as a leader, it doesn't come easy. You want to get involved more, it doesn't come easy. I think God's intentional with that. I mean, we say it's not going to come easy, but it's worth it. It's not going to come easy, but we got a passion to see it come this way. And you see, passion makes a way. Though it doesn't come easy, passion makes a way. There's no easy way to work with the people we work with. Come on, somebody. You need confirmation. Look at your neighbor and say, hello. It ain't easy to work with the people we work with. It's not easy to interact with the people we interact with. But how many know passion makes a way? There was no easy way for this task, yet it wasn't optional for them. Though it was no easy way for this task, it wasn't optional. 
It wasn't an option for them to not meet the need and for them to not make a way to get this man to Jesus. It wasn't a choice of doing it or not for these men. You see, it wasn't an option of getting him to Jesus. Let me say it like this. It wasn't who's going to let me in the room. It was who's going to stop me. These men had a passion. They said, it's not who's going to let me in. It's who's going to stop me. I got a passion for this man to see him to Jesus. And though there's no way, I'll make a way. Why? Because passion makes a way where there's no way. Because if Jesus called me to it, I'm going to see it through. It makes a way. It makes a way there in your cell group. It makes a way there in your ministry. It makes a way to see your family come to God. It makes a way to see your son saved, your daughter saved. It makes a way where there's no way. Who's going to stop me? That's the mentality they had. That's the mentality they had. That's how I knew these men had passion. A full room didn't stop them. They didn't say, call it a day, wrap it up, forget about it. We gave it our best shot. We tried. I'll try it next time. They said, there's no room in. Let's go up. They said, there's no room in. Let's go up. There's no room in. Check the side. Check the right side. Go behind the building. There's no room in. Let's take them up. How many know they made it happen? How many know Victory Outreach, you know how to make it happen? We know how to see souls saved. We know how to make it happen. Why? Because of the passion that these men had for them. They were going to make it happen. Their passion refused to let them be stopped. So all of a sudden, these men are climbing up this house to make it to the top. And they get to the top of the roof. And they begin to make a hole in the top. Why? Because they said, if we can't get into Jesus, we'll bring them down to Jesus. Whatever we got to do, we're going to make a way to see this man get his healing, to see this man get his breakthrough, to see this man get his touch from Jesus. So there they go to the top of the building making a hole, dropping him and lowering him to Jesus. Can you imagine that? Sanctuary full. Jesus is preaching. Jesus is teaching. And all of a sudden, you see people digging through the top of the roof. Like, what in the world? Get campus up there. What's, what's going on up here? What's going on? Is that the kids gang, new gen? What's going on up there? And all of a sudden, they begin to lower somebody. Passion made a way. Passion made a way. Some of you swore up and down you never walk in a victory outreach. Passion made away. Some of you could have never seen yourself off of drugs. Passion made away. Some of you could have never seen your family back together, but passion made away. Never you. Some of you could have never seen yourself clean and seen your kids calling you dad and seen your kids calling you mom, but passion made away where there was no way. We were some impossible cases, but passion made away. Passion makes a way where there's no way. Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie in 1967 to today a worldwide ministry, the largest inner city ministry of the world. Don't tell me passion doesn't make a way. That's powerful. So here's this man making a way because this man's healing wasn't optional. It wasn't optional. These men said it's not a choice for us to leave this man. It's not an option for us to leave this man. I love what Elder Pastor Steve Pineda would say. He said, when it comes to ministry, if you can take it or leave it, then just leave it. If you can take it or leave it, then it's better you leave it. Why? Because in this ministry, it takes people that say, I can't leave it if I wanted to leave it. I try to throw in the towel. Jesus threw it back at me. I try to say, I ain't coming to church on Wednesday night, but I came on Wednesday night, still got an envelope, still put money in it, still dropped it in the basket, still discipled, still prayed. Why? Because it's not optional. God chose me for this. God moved me to this. God saved me for this. This is not an option. It must be done in my life. That's our DNA. That's our DNA. It's not an option. Even when you picked up your phone to call your leader to tell him how you felt, how many know you couldn't say it? He said, wait till I tell him what I want to feel, what I'm feeling in my, wait till I tell him how I feel. And what happened? You get to your leader, he didn't say nothing. Why? It's not an option. 
It's not an option. Some of you walked up to Pastor Allen, tried to tell him, Pastor, this isn't for me, but you got around the man of God, and all of a sudden, you said, I couldn't get the words out of my lips. I tried to tell God I'm done with this, but I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. Why? Because it's not an option. God saved me. He's been too good to me. He's been too good for my life. It's not an option in my life. Passion makes a way. Passion makes a way. Why? Because ministry is people. And we as a ministry never seen people being set free from sin as a possibility. We've seen it modeled as a reality. When somebody said it couldn't be done, when people would look at us and say it couldn't be done, we've seen it as not a possibility but a reality. And the promise of descendants inheriting the nations. I'm here to tell you it's not a possibility. It's a reality. The second fold of our promise, Isaiah 54, 2 and 3, it's not a possibility. It's not a one day. It's a reality. Listen to me, descendants, it's no choice. We have no choice but to step into it. If it's an option for you, step out the way. Because God's raising up some descendants that say passion makes a way. I know the job you got today. I know the relationship you got today. But passion makes a way where there seems to be no way. It's not a choice. It's not an option. But it's mandatory for our lives. Passion made a way for them. Number three, passion drives our faith. Passion meets the need. Passion makes a way. And passion drives our faith. These men begin to lower this paralyzed man down to Jesus. And I can imagine their faith and their expectation at times. Can you imagine your expectation, what it would be? If you saw this man and said, let's just take him to Jesus real quick before we go to dinner. Come on, somebody. Let's just go drop him off at the home real quick before we go to our fellowship. Let's go get him to the home. They'll pray him in. They'll holy ghost him down. And let's get him there. For, but, but can you imagine when they're carrying him and they take him to the church and they take him to where Jesus sat and it's too full? I imagine one of them said, man, forget it. Just leave him there, right? We tried, brother. Get somebody else to take him. But no, they said, all right. Let's take him up then. Let's take him up then. I can't imagine when they began to work and making a hole there on the top. And when they began to lower him, I can imagine they looked down and said, man, I can't wait till Jesus sees this one. I can't wait to see what Jesus does with that. Can you imagine the expectation they had when they began to lower him? Can you imagine the anticipation I can imagine their faith at an all-time high as they did it. Why? Because the passion to see this man healed overcame their obstacles. And they're waiting to see, to, to see the reaction, to see what Jesus did as they lowered him down. And as they lowered him down, that's when Jesus sees them. And notice what he sees. Notice what the Bible says. You see, he didn't just acknowledge the distracting hole being built right there in the middle of his sermon that they made in the roof right there. He didn't even acknowledge the paralyzed man. So take note of what he acknowledged there. Verse 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith, not the distraction, not the paralyzed man in the bed, when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the men lowering him, when Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the paralyzed man, though he had faith, they saw the faith of the men lowering him. Take note, the paralyzed man had faith to get healed, but the men lowering him had great faith to see him get healed. It took faith to, to see himself get healed, but it took the men great faith to see the healing done for him. It takes faith to believe for personal miracles, but how many know it takes great faith to fight battles and overcome obstacles for someone else's miracles? Jesus said, I don't see a man with faith. I see men with great faith that went through the trouble of lowering a man down to get to me. Just like some people are here tonight. And Jesus says, I see personal needs, but I see great faith tonight. Because some of you came into the house of God believing for family members, believing for sinners, believing for your friends, believing for co-workers. He said, there's faith in the house, but there's great faith here as well. It took great faith for them to believe that. It took great faith for them to believe that this man could get healed. 
Jesus didn't just take notice of the man's faith for the miracle, but he acknowledged the great faith of the men lowering him down. Jesus sees their faith and says, son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus then goes on to tell him, pick up your mat and walk. And all of a sudden, this man gets, this man gets up. But what I love about the Bible here is this man gets up, picks up his mat, and the Bible says, in full view of everyone. In full view. In full view. This man walks out. In full view, this man walked out. No, not ones that just, just the ones in the room seen him, but it was full view, the ones that seen him. This miracle was accounted for as a one-man miracle. It was a full view miracle that caused Everyone, the Bible says, because of this miracle, not just one man praised God, but it was a full view miracle that caused all the people in the house that were there with Jesus to praise God because they seen the miracle. It was a full view miracle. And Vio San Diego, I came to declare tonight that this week we are forcefully advancing in this Passion Week as we get ready for Easter and we're meeting the need, we're making a way, and we're driving our faith. And as we do that, I believe God's going to do a full view miracle that's not just a one-time event on a Sunday morning but it's going to be full view that the city of San Diego says something's happening there in that church house. Something's happening here in our community. I don't know what it is, but gay violence is down. I don't know what it is, but drug addiction's coming down. I don't know what it is, but the methadone clinic's emptying out. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. It's a full view miracle that started in San Diego, Victory Outreach, but all of a sudden, I believe it's going to break out in the city. A full view miracle. It was a full view miracle. This man didn't just walk away with a good story. Everybody in the room seen it happen. Everybody seen it happen. Why? Because they were not believing just for one man. And this one man wasn't just believing for himself, but their faith was for others. It was for great faith. It was great faith. I thank God for our founders and our elders and our leaders because they have great faith. That say, I'm not satisfied with God setting me free, God cleaning me up, God setting my feet on a rock. But they say, no, there's more to take in the world. We're not satisfied. There's still drug addicts dying. There's still gang members dying. Our city's still crying. We're still seeing the enemy run rapid. But as long as we're here, we got breath in our lungs. We're not just going to have an average faith. We're not going to have a one-man faith. But we're going to have a great faith that says, I'll go out my way for others because I got passion. That says, I'll meet the need for others because I got passion. I worked all day, but I'll go to church anyway. I'll pick up a disciple anyway. I'll pick up a first-time visit or anyway because I got great faith to not just see my family saved but to see their family saved because God saved me so he can save them. I got great faith. Great faith because there's still a city to be one. I want you to stand with your feet. Stand on your feet with me tonight. Great faith. It was a full view miracle. It was a full view miracle. When our founders were set free, it wasn't a one-man miracle. You look today at conferences, you see the full view miracle. When leaders that went before us, pastors, when you see them up there in their congregations, you see what a full view miracle. Why? Because they don't just have faith, but they got passion. And they got great faith. These men were fighting a battle and going through trials and setbacks and work for a paralyzed man. They weren't getting nothing out of it. They weren't going to get lowered in. The man was. That wasn't their miracle. But they had great faith. I said, man, if we can get into Jesus... Who else is going to do it? Just like some of us, when we got saved, 
We didn't believe it for ourselves. Some of us people were fighting battles for us. They were fighting war for four. They were raging war in their prayer closet for us. When we weren't praying, when we weren't reading, they were going to war, going to battle, fasting, believing, tithing, and giving, and believing that God was going to touch our lives. Why? Because great faith. Great faith. That they wouldn't just see a one-man miracle, but a full-view miracle. A full-view miracle. And I believe that's what God's stirring right now in this Passion Week. You clock out and come to evangelism anyway. After a full day of work, tired, coffee didn't even pick you up. Come on, somebody. Said, Brother, I need a five-hour energy or something. This thing ain't working. I'm on instant coffee now. Come on, somebody. Training center got me to instant coffee. <laughs> it hits hard. It gets me up. Amen. But why? Because I want to see a full view miracle. I thank God for saving my family. But there's more families that are just like mine. I thank God for giving me purpose and a calling. But there's still people dying going to hell. I thank God that I'm able to wake up with destiny and purpose. But there's still people that don't wake up. There's still a world dying. I'm not too busy to see that. I'm not distracted by, by all these things around me to see that there are still souls dying going to hell. But it takes what great faith to not just believe, to, to put our own needs to the side and say, this is inconvenient, but this man has no other hope. There's no option for us to leave this man. We leave this man, he's stuck. We got to get him to Jesus. And what I love about the Lord is as you do his will, he gives you full view miracles. Can you imagine the faith that rose in that building? When he said, your sins are forgiven, pick up your mat and walk. And all of a sudden, this paralyzed man stands to his feet, grabs his mat and begins to walk out of that room. Says, excuse me, I got to go. Excuse me, I've been down too long. Excuse me, I got destiny in my future. Excuse me, I met Jesus today and Jesus set me free. I met Jesus today and he gave me my strength back. I met Jesus today and he gave me my joy back. I met Jesus today and things are still going bad. Things may still go wrong, but I met Jesus and I'm a lot better today than I was a couple years ago. I got things today that I prayed for in the past. I met Jesus, and I got great faith that will bring others to Jesus. Great faith brings revival. The third wave of revival is not going to come by just waiting. It's going to take great faith to say, let's get him to Jesus. I'll separate and go to the training center. I'll die to myself and put my wants to the side. I'll let go of that job. I'll let go of what I got. I got great faith to see a full view miracle. That's what's going to take us there. And that's what's going to drive us to see the greatest Easter revival of souls that we've ever seen in the city of San Diego. I believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? A full view miracle. A full view miracle. The city will see it. San Diego County will feel it. They'll see it all around. They'll sense it all around. Listen, I want to invite you to this altar. And we're going to come together with full view faith and see God meet us at our point of need tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.